Radical. Welcome to Flea Market Stories, documenting one man's journey into the world of flea marketing. I want to say before I get into the flea market stories that my knee is almost all the way back. My knee's almost all the way back. I can run on it now. I still have a little bit of the sack, the, the red swollen sack in the tip of it. So I really can't put any weight on it. But as far as walking around and everything, got to understand, got to understand last Last Monday, I was struggling to get in and out of my car. That's how bad and swollen it was. So that that is great. Uh, also, there won't be much of any flea marketing this weekend. They're only open, and I'm not sure if they're going to even be open because it's going to be so cold. They supposedly are going to be open only until noon. So I only got a couple hours, and it's going to be very, very, very cold. And I don't really know exactly what I'm going to do. I mean, I got to show up technically, but uh, I don't think they really expect a lot of people even to show up. So they probably won't hold it against me. Um, Also, I've got most all the Christmas shopping done. As you can hear, I have fixed my mic issue, which was causing some delay in the uploads. So a lot of things are really kind of coming together this particular week, especially with me not having to really worry about getting ready for this weekend's flea marketing where I can hopefully get caught up and increase my output of uploads, which I'm really happy about. So I guess uh, I will basically just go into the weekend of the flea marketing, and I'm not really going going to go in any specific... uh, um, I'm just going to talk about random things that happen over the weekend. I did a buy one, get one free Christmas sale, and I realized, you know, I got to strike while the iron's hot, I have a lot of stuff to move. I sadly still have some of the actual just Christmas stuff. Miniatures. I forgot the Christmas rugs that I got for free at the dump that were almost brand new. So if I go to the flea market, you know, if I'm there this weekend, hell, I might just put just nothing but Christmas stuff on the table and sell it for a fucking dime each. I don't know. Just a quarter a dime. Because I got to get rid of this Christmas stuff. You might say, well, you can hold on to it for next year. I'm like, ah, oh, man, I just want to get rid of it. I really want to get rid of it. So I did a buy one, get one free Christmas sale. And at times, I didn't have all the games out in the trays, specifically the PS3 games. I ran out of trays, so I didn't have the ability to put them out. I was telling people I have a big box of PlayStation 3 games and explain to me this. Why were people more excited to root through the box of PS3 games than they were to see them in trays? Like, like mentally, does something happen when people like go through a box of something? They feel like they're going to get something really great in the box. Whereas if it's presented in a tray, they are less enthused. Like, oh, I got to dig, dig to get into this box and see everything in the box. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I also did the buy one get one free on the movies, but no one bought a single movie outside of maybe the Christmas stuff. No, I think I, last weekend I sold some Christmas movies, but not a single damn movie sold. Not a single one. So the movies, I don't know. I, I'm thinking of just doing a clearance on the movies and getting rid of most of what I have. Some will still sell, you know, some Veggie Tales, some kid stuff. Uh, if I have some more Super Mario Brother, <laughs> yeah, those will sell. But the regular movies, anything that you could probably see on Netflix or Hulu, those are really just not moving. And uh, yeah, I got a lot of movies to move also. And I have another guy that called me over to his table. I think it was Sunday. And he mentioned that he had like a lot of kids movies. I asked this. I'm sorry, I'm all over the place. Did I finish that one thought? Um Everything I want to talk about with the Bowling Game Free. Yeah, yeah, I did on the comics. It was it was pretty successful on the games. It was. Um, but people people were just going for like the big tiles for the most part. And I said, eh, I kind of hope that people the intention was to just move a lot of my overstock. But I I sold pretty much all the GTAs, which I didn't want to do, except for the Xbox One GTA. 
damn, I got so much to talk about here. So it's, it's my show. I can talk about whatever I want to. I got so many GTAs. And before I get into the other thing, I want to mention, I don't think I sold one single Xbox One game of all the platforms. PS4 sold, Xbox 360, uh, PS1, 2. I even sold a couple PS1 games. But I didn't sell a single Xbox One game. Is it possible because people are just not caring about buying the physical Xbox One games because, you know, Game Pass? Hmm. I've noticed a trend also in some of the gaming stores, the Xbox One games are lesser than the PS4 games. So if you're a physical collector, I mean, that's, that's a great thing. Like, I saw Dragon Ball Fighter Z for $8.99, where it was like 15 bucks on the PS4. So it's a good thing if you like physical games, I guess. But, huh, I just thought it kind of weird. I even had a sealed GTA V, and I did not sell that. Hmm. But getting back to this one guy, so... He mentions to me that he has some movies. This is after, I think, last week. And I went through his storage building before and got some stuff out. I got some pretty good stuff. I paid him, I think, $150 for a lot of movies, like a giant tub of movies and an Xbox 360. That worked and I sold. And a PS2 Slim, that worked and I sold. So, you know, sometimes he has some nice stuff. Not going not gonna to lie. He's also the person I got the Super Mario Brothers DVDs from that I sold. But uh, he's really trying to push the DVDs, you know. And at least he was. He called me over and I told him, you know, I'm mostly just looking for games right now. I walked over. I was trying to be nice. I looked at the kids' movies. And I have, I have a lot of kids' movies. Nothing wrong with kids' movies. I think he said he had maybe like 120 and he would let it go for 70 You might say that's a pretty good deal, right? You sell the kids' movies for... Yeah, but I mean, it's going to take me a long time to sell that. And I'll explain to him if this place were open longer, maybe Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, I'd jump at that. But I, I look at like how long I'm going to hold on to it and how fast it's going to sell. And we're getting into the cold weather months. And I think a lot of the people that go to the flea market are going to be like z zeroing in on just particular items. Some just tells me that when it comes to the cold weather months, I mean, what do you think people will buy in the cold weather months? I'm thinking big items. The people that come there, are the people that are coming there, are not looking for maybe like DVDs. They're looking for maybe like electronics and games and stuff, right? Uh, what else happened this weekend? Uh, one of the guys that I sell comics to, he came by the table, and I was a bit shocked. He's the guy that, like, he told me he likes Venom. He likes Flash. He likes Spider-Man, you know, Deadpool, stuff of that nature. But everyone likes Spider-Man and Deadpool, like, stuff to collect. I had a copy of, you might know who this is. It's a Valiant book. Magnus... Magus Robot Fighter. Okay, so, you know. It this doesn't look it it doesn't it's not that impressive of a book looking back. But the cover was nice. I think it was number 25 and the whole cover was silver. It looked like a nickel, like a shiny nickel, right? Embossed and all that. I had $5 on it. And sure, I was doing the buy one, get one free sale and whatnot. But I think this guy would have bought that regardless. Then I had a Wildcats. I forget which number it was. If you don't know what Wildcats is, I hope you, hopefully you're familiar with Jim Lee, amazing artist Jim Lee, one of the best X-Men artists. If you don't know, seriously, if you don't know who Jim Lee, the artist is, look up Jim Lee Comics. Y you will just be amazed. He's one of the, my favorite, maybe top 10. Him, McFarlane, uh, Eric Larson, maybe, my top 10 comic artist of all time. But uh, he also got that one, which was a shiny embossed, you, you know, you, you, you take the comic cover and it reflects in the light, reflects in the light, you know, shiny stuff. He's a sucker for shiny covers. So I'm thinking to myself, okay, I can't really overdo it. Can't overdo it, but it's like... I, I wonder what his limit is for buying shiny, shiny covers. 
he also seemed to go crazy over some shiny, shiny Marvel Metal cards. Now, if I if I show him all the Marvel Metal cards I have, it's a set like from, I believe, the 90s. If I show him all the Marvel Metal cards, I'm just saying there's, there's a potential to overdo it. You want people to think that this stuff is somewhat semi-rare. You present it like, look at this. But if you're like, you got a whole box of them, you're like, look at these. And like, well, that's not that special. You know what I'm saying? I had a situation with a break. Uh, one of my controllers broke. And I didn't think of this happening because my controllers I use are, they're plug-in. But it just so happens, I think it was a, you know, it wasn't a Rock Candy controller, it was a GameStop controller. The controllers have long six-foot cables. And I don't know what caused it. Maybe there was vibration in the game. Maybe it was like, maybe it was like, just maybe it was meant to be. Maybe it was just broke to send me a message or something. I'm not sure. But I, I just heard a big crack and I'm like, ah, oh, shit. Walked around the corner. And I don't have a picture of it because, funny story, did I tell you all uh, that I put all these broken controllers in a bag and I went to meet the one he, she, and then I laid down the broken controllers and I didn't get to throw them away. It sucks because that's one of the good controllers that was working. I had some rock candy controllers that they you would plug it in and it would not register. Or you would see the green, it would go around, and then, you know how an Xbox controller does where it goes around. And the one part to the left lit up, but then it just died. And that was a six controller lot that I got for 30 some bucks. You know, so that sucks there. Uh, what else? What else? I think that's all I kind of want to want to talk about. Seems like there's always going to be something I probably probably forget um but i'll just i'll just leave it there so overall it was not a bad weekend money wise um 160 i didn't sell any consoles i had a lot of people asking about the consoles didn't sell any consoles of course that saturday i was in a situation to where i had three on display one of them didn't have a hard drive though because like i mentioned before somebody i believe stole one of my hard drives and I just got one white Xbox 360 in the mail today. I have two more coming. They were late, though. So it didn't surprise me that I didn't sell one of the consoles. I did do good on the games, though. I did. So 160 Saturday. Could it have been a better day? Yeah. Seemed like I was selling more. But what it was is, if it was not buy one going free, you can make the argument I would have made more, well over 200 but I think the buy one, get one free made me some new customers and they appreciated the buy one, get one free sale. And then Sunday, it I barely squeaked out to 80 and I didn't get any sales until after after 12. So, yeah, just overall a kind of letdown of the holidays, considering that. Like I said, this weekend, I'm not even going to get to go to the flea market, really, because, you know, they were only open for a couple week, couple uh, hours. So you have a two week hiatus and just a just a big letdown, I would say, overall, comparative to what I was trying to bring in game wise. Uh, but I'm going to probably dis- diversify. And uh, someone mentioned eBay. I, don't know. I, might, I might do eBay. I think it's probably going to be the best for me to take some focus away from flea marketing and just take a stock literally of everything I have that I've acquired. And once you get in, once you get into buying things and going into the auctions, it kind of gets a bit addictive. It does. So I found myself, you know, I was doing something else, maybe uh, working on a YouTube channel. And then I was checking out some, some auctions on Goodwill going like, well, wait, 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 wait. You don't need to be doing this because you're not even really going to the flea market this weekend, but you get in that rhythm and everything. So uh, I probably got a whole lot more in some boxes that I, I forgot even came in mail. So that's what I'm going to do. 
take a stock of everything, organize, and make the most of this Christmas weekend that I have off and I don't have to worry about the flea market. And I will try to uh, upload a lot for you guys because I have the time.